brought my highlight film, uh, the John Island highlight film from the years I played. So if you would just turn around and look at the back wall, there's a, let's get it started. <laughs> yeah, there's only, there's only two plays on that reel, that wouldn't do it either. There are no highlights of John Nile, I assure you. Um, I did play guard. Now some people don't know what a guard does. And the best way to describe it is I've, all the time when I get interviewed or, or get talking about what I play, nobody remembers the offensive guard. So I say, to, remember the fat guy who used to snap the ball to Roger Staubach before we play? Yeah, we all know that guy, remember? Well, that wasn't me. I was a fat guy on the left. So that puts it in perspective. <laughs> fat guy on the left. Um, I'm going to pass my Super Bowl ring around because uh, lock the door if you don't mind. <laughs> Some people have asked me about it, and I can only tell you that that's what they were fighting for this past weekend. Uh, that, along with a dollar, probably get you a cup of coffee. And I can only tell you that I was very blessed to play on a great team. Now, if you really want to get down to it, people always ask me all the time, well, what's the difference between the old Cowboys and the new Cowboys? Well, I could tell you verbally, but I'd rather describe it to you. And, and I think I can do it by just a... Well, work with me on this. Uh, Don, uh, would you mind? I need you up here for a second. Right. Don, you're not going to get hurt. promise you. <laughs> be down here. We, need a, we need a Roger Stalbach. You're my Roger Stalbach, okay? Or Craig Morton. Or Craig Morton. That'd be fine. All right. Uh, <laughs> hey, Randy, come on over here and help me, would you please? You know who you are. <laughs> All right. And... Uh, uh, let me see, uh, Abe. Uh, where, come on up, Abe. Um, also, if you don't mind, let me grab one more. Come on up here. Frank, come up here and join me for a second. I'm telling you a true story because I'm going to give you an illustration of why the Cowboys are different today than they were 20 years ago. And I grabbed the story from the National Geographic. Uh, come on up here. Uh, I need some more people. Uh, I need a... Uh, I need a... Uh, uh, I need a Tony Dorsett. Hey, Tony Dorsett. <laughs> Come on, be my Tony Dorsett for a second. Come on, You know anything about the Canadian geese? No, I didn't know either. I'm going to illustrate what the difference is between today's Cowboys and yesterday's Cowboys. This is my Roger Staubach. He's at the front. If you ever watch Canadian geese, you know why they fly in a formation and they go miles and miles away? You know why they do that? I haven't got a clue either. I just know they do. <laughs> we have a lead goose. The lead goose gets out here. Come on, wait a little bit further, John. I'm gonna, you know, look. And then you have a bunch of geese falling behind in an arrow formation or in a wing formation. And if you don't mind, gentlemen, just kind of take this over here. And, and I got, uh, yeah, uh, I've read out here. And you're last, Frank, if you don't mind. They do have one side typically is longer than the other side. Everybody know why that is? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I'm bringing you up today because according to the National Life, uh, Wildlife Association, Canadian geese go thousands of miles. And, and, they, and they fly in a formation because I'm sure aerodynamically there's a lot of benefit to that. Uh, but typically what happens is they move forward with enthusiasm and grace and excitement. So what they do is they have this... Well, don't they switch places? Uh, no, no. Uh, yeah, we and you either. know what Canadian geese sound like when they cross the path? Oh, oh, and give us a couple of honks. Oh, 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 and you're moving forward. Come on now, don't let me honk. Don't let me fly. Just hit me honk. Oh, 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 oh. And now the lead goose, after a period of time, gets very tired, goes back to the back. Roger's back there, and I'm going to bring up another quarterback, and you move forward, Anton. And they continue to fly thousands of miles. All right, let's go honk. All right, now. And, uh, it's interesting also that they do get tired. They do get tired, and, and the honking really is for encouragement and enthusiasm. Now, I can't understand what they're saying, <laughs> neither can you, but they do an extremely important job of crossing mountain ranges, and, and they go way out of their way, and they only do it because they have the ability, they encourage each other, they honk for each other, and they're supporting each other. So give us another honk. Uh -huh. Now! Hey, a droid over here from now with his 12 gauge. <laughs> Boom! All right, we knocked you out of the sky. You get down to the ground, and they usually have another goose will come over and hover around and watch to see if that goose is going to come back up and join the formation. He's basically just protecting him. Now, if he dies, lousy shot. If he dies, then he just peels off and rejoins the group. 
This is true. This really? is exactly what they do. Canadian geese are very them. interesting. They're family oriented. They're a family group. <clears throat> and they really stick up for each other. They support each other. And it is aerodynamic to fly in that formation. And when that guy is tired, they bring the next guy up. He falls to the back again. All right, you did not die, Pastor. Come on up here. You're going to join the group again. You're in the back. He caught up to the group. The last <laughs> now, why is this formation so important? Last uh, I'm telling you this. I've never shot a goose in my life. But when Canadian geese can do this for thousands of miles, that's the difference between the old cowboys teamwork. and the new cowboys. Number one, we have teamwork. Number two, we have leaders. Number three, we had players. There's not enough players today. They are not as good as they were. Now don't get me wrong, they got good players, they're great players, but still, they're not as good as we were because they are all out individually trying to make their own buck. Yeah. Now there's nothing wrong with that, that's just the way our society is today, but yeah. these gentlemen right here, I would tell you, is the cowboys of all. So give me a honk and wave. Oh, oh, right. oh, Thank you, Steve. Oh, Thank you very much. <laughs> we had leadership. We had guys like Roger Staubach and Leroy Jordan and Bob Lilly. Uh, we don't have those anymore. Uh, they make a lot more money than we did, but that's not why we played. We kind of played for the ring, but we played for each other. And I'm not saying we were better than the players today, because I think the players today are bigger and they're stronger and they're smart. There's a lot of good things about the players, but they're not a team. Now don't tell Jerry that because I live very close to him. I don't particularly want him coming over the house. Um, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that's the major difference you see in today's ball players. Now, how do they change? How do they differ? Well, it starts with the up at the top. Now, Jerry wants to continue to be the leader of the team. He's probably going to stay there. He's not going to turn over any support to the coaching staff and without his supervision. Does it work? I don't know. If you read yesterday's paper, they were comparing him to Belichick and that group up there in New England. A uh, much stronger group than we have down here. Whether you believe it or not, it's just, nah. it's, it's objectional. So here's what I'd like to talk about. How about you? How about you in your business? You all are involved in some business. What, for example, give me an idea of what you do for a living using one word. Sales. Sales. Wealth management. Wealth management. Two words. Support. There you go. Is that? Consulting. Marketing. Sales. Do you know that's God's will for you? A lot of times you become a Christian, and I find that often we get lost in the sea of uh, spiritualism. And many times I get asked, well, what, what do you do? I'm a salesman. There's nothing major. But we have... Let me have that water if you don't mind. By the way, I'm not 100% today, gentlemen. I walked off my curb in my house and I broke my foot the day before yesterday. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to talk and at the same time I'll get through this. Uh, because I think it's important. I want to talk about you and what you're doing to support the community. What exactly do you have in your lifestyle right now that you can say this is what God has for you? Now some of you do have good jobs. Some of you don't like your jobs. Some of you want to move on to another job. But I'm telling you, this is God's will for you. And I'm going to prove it here in just a minute. What you're doing right now is God's will. Now it may be His permissive will. It may be His perfect will. But it's God's will for you. And if you don't understand that, I fear that you're going to miss the importance of what God is telling us. And I brought some support material. I want to share that with you in just a second. But let's talk about you. Are you saved? You know, we're a Christian group. Uh, some of you are saved, some aren't. Uh, I'm not going to say we pick fruit, but I would tell you that if you don't know the God that I know, that I would find yourself another guy. Uh, it turns out that in my position, I get to speak to a lot of groups. I'm not saying it's the only way to talk to people, but I just kind of lay it on the line. Uh, and if you're not saved, pay, pay, co pay close attention to what I'm going to say. You know, I found football players in Scripture too. I found myself. I found myself in Ephesians. Now, if you're familiar with the Bible, Ephesians, go over and read it when you get home tonight. I think it's one of the best chapters in the entire book for understanding what the heck are we here for. <coughs> I'm saved. Or maybe I'm not. Well, what is my job? Is it in sales? Is this a new job? It's to be a parent. It's to be a father. It's certainly to be involved with your particular business. What is my responsibility? According to God, he says, <laughs> that's what he wants you to do. 
And he's saying, for Christ's sake, do a good job. Ephesians chapter 6. And he uh, talks starting in verse 5. Slaves, uh, slaves, be obedient to your masters. Slaves, be, be obedient to your masters. Um, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and the sincerity of your heart, as to Christ, not only when they are watching an eye service, but also do the good things one does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether slave or free. Now, I, I've been doing some research on this so years ago. Uh, there were many millions of slaves throughout the ancient time. Uh, a slave was nothing more than a hammer, a chisel, a, a nail. And when they got worn out, they threw them away. And the Lord's talking to those people right here. Uh, he's saying, slaves, uh, he's saying, for Christ's sake, be a good slave. That's how I interpret that. Uh, he didn't necessarily say it was good they were slaves, but they knew they were slaves, and they are talking, the Lord's talking to them and saying, just be a good slave. Now, we're not slaves. We can do anything we want. We can go to football games, and we can become president of businesses. We can become salespeople. We can do nothing if we want to. And that really kind of hits home to me, because if you're really honestly looking at yourself, what is your job? And do you realize the Lord's got you there? Now, we got freedom to up and leave. You know, I had a chance to go to other football teams. I didn't have to play for the Cowboys. But I played. I stayed where I was. And I knew that was where it was God wanted me. So I stayed there. At the same time, he's also got you where you're working right now. This is God's will for you. If he's talking to the slave and he's saying, Slaves, be good slaves. Oh, my God. What does that mean to us? And that's what he says in Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 5. Slaves, be obedient to your masters. Now, listen, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the only thing in life is to, is to be a slave. But in God's permissive will, he might have that for you. And you're not really slaves because you have the freedom to move around. You have the freedom to do whatever you want to do. And I would say to you that the leadership of the Cowboys and the leadership of any company starts with the heart. If you've actually had a chance to uh, uh, read the scriptures and, and, and work on them, uh, let's talk about them. You're now saved. Um, what is God's will for your life? What exactly does he want you to do? Well, in my case, I was a salesman. I'm in the chemical business. Nothing exciting, nothing glorious, nothing fancy. But that's where he wants me to be. And I'm the best damn salesman you'll ever meet. Because I care about my customers. I work with my customers. And I'd be doggone if the Lord's put me there that I'm going to be the best I can be. Now, I'm not perfect. I've certainly made a lot of mistakes. But that's why I play football, too. I felt the Lord had me there at the time at the time I played because that's where he wanted me. And it is hard to make a football team. It's not easy. It's hard to make your team wherever you're working right now. But you guys are professional. And God has put you there for a reason. Now, I don't know what that reason is. But if you're there for a salesman, you know what a salesman does. If you're there as president, you know what the presidents do. If you're there as a manager, you know what you do. But God is saying to you, for Christ's sake, be a good salesman. Be a good whatever.